Hello everybody, welcome to the screencast. I'd like to show you what's new in the MPS 3.4 generator. In particular, I'd like to look into the cross-model generation, generation plans and dev kits and how these all work together. So I prepared this uh, little example where I've got a language, a very straightforward language where I've got an entity that has a name and then I've got a container for references that may point to these entities. So a very simplified declaration references pattern where I've got declarations and references to these declarations in another container. So then when I use that language I've got two models A and B I can define entities, entity E1, entity E2 in different models and then in the model A I've got a container called C1 which has a reference to A1 and can have a reference to E2 as well. Now if I remove reference to E2, so now all references stay within the same model so now container C1 points to an entity E1 which is in the same model. So now rebuilding the solution will work just beautifully. And the generation works and all the classes that were supposed to be generated were generated. However, if I add reference to E2, now the model A cannot be generated because the reference pointing to E2 crosses the model boundaries and points to the model B which is generated separately from model A and so the generation fails simply because when generating the reference we cannot resolve the declaration to point to. The resolution is done the standard way you know, the generator has a mapping label called stored entities which preserve for each entity the static field declaration in this case into which it gets generated. So we need to replace the reference so we need to replace the reference that we point to with the actual static field uh, with a reference to the actual static field declaration that was generated out of the entity which is done using the stored entities mapping label. However, mapping labels only work within the same model. So now we need to use explicit generation plan to create a checkpoint in which the mapping label will be persisted and propagated across models. Okay, so what we need is a generation plan. Let's create a new solution. And now in that solution, I'll create a model that will hold the actual build plan. So we'll need the S model language and the generator plan language. These two languages are needed in order to define build generation plans. So now we should give it a name, plan A, and now the transformations that are needed. So first we'll transform the new language. So once the new language gets generated, we'll create a checkpoint. We'll give it some name and then afterwards we'll continue with generation this time with base language because our language generates into base language. So the plan is very straightforward. Just we translate our language, then we've got a checkpoint to store all mapping labels so that they are available when generating other models, and then well we'll do the transformation of base language. In order for this plan to take effect we have to include it in the sandbox solution. So the first approach, you can so in the first approach you can directly 
specify that you want to do custom generation and we need to import the plan solution module here so that now we can take the plan the plan model and import it so now this solution has this generation plan associated so when you try to rebuild it it will apply that generation plan and the generation and so the generation proceeded so now everything has been generated successfully so this checkpoint in the in the generation plan indicates that the generator at this point should take the mapping labels and persist them so that when other models get generated they are able to resolve entities in our case from uh, these stored persisted mapping labels from these checkpoints and the checkpoints are visible down here so you can investigate what is actually stored at uh, the various uh, checkpoints so now we see that this is the model A after new language checkpoint and what it stores so the stored entities mapping label right that is so this is a mapping label that we're using in this application so the mapping label at this checkpoint for model A contains one entity of E1 which maps this entity which is stored in here to if I click on this uh, to this static field declaration that gets generated out of it it's really you know a peak view into the persisted mapping label which points to the to the right models and to the right nodes the input node and the output node as they are stored in the mapping label for model B the stored entities mapping label in the stores an entity called E2 which is defined in here in model B and the output node for it is this static field declaration and thanks to this persisted mapping label the generator is actually able to resolve the output nodes for other models and since these checkpoints are preserved they're persisted I can now modify model A let's say I remove E1 so now I need to rebuild model A but model B doesn't need to be rebuilt because it, it has been changed and the checkpoints for it are still valid and available so the reference from container 1 pointing to this B model B the entity 2 can still be resolved during generation so I only rebuild model A and things will still work another useful addition to MPS in version 3.4 is the support for dev kits in generation plans so now instead of directly specifying the generation plan for a sandbox solution we'll use a dev kit to do that so I remove uh, the dependency Kay, so we no longer need a dependency on a particular generation plan we'll instead use a dev kit to define the whole structure of languages solutions and the build plan for them so a new dev kit now in properties for that de for that dev kit we'll add the languages and solutions that we want to to be included in the dev kit well dev kit will sort of wrap them so that you can access them as a unit so we only have one language and well one solution that holds the generation plan so we'll only use these two And now for a dev kit, we can also specify 
a generation plan. So any model that will import this dev kit will have that plan that we specify here applied, uh, applied automatically. So this is the model. So this is the model that holds the generation plan. And now we have the dev kit ready. So the dev kit only exports one language and well this build solution. And now we should be using that dev kit in our sandbox solution instead of using the language directly. Models E a and B should not be using the language new language directly, but instead they should import new dev kit. And that dev kit contains all the languages that are sort of part of the of the bundle. Although in our case it's just one language anyway. So so we we add that dev kit and we remove the language. Yes, we can delete it anyway because now the dev kit will take over And we'll do the same for B. Dev kit, remove the language. Now we can rebuild that language easily without issues. We didn't have to specify a generation plan on the you know sandbox level. We didn't have to set custom generation. All we did was importing the dev kit as a, you know to, to hold the used languages, and that was it. Once the dev kit is imported, if, if it has a generation plan associated, it will be applied to the model. And again, you can see checkpoints down here. And if you rebuild only model A, then the checkpoints will be used to retrieve all the mapping labels of model Bs. So cross model references can be resolved. Okay, that's all for now. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.